Electromess Technique 140, the EMT 140, a classic, iconic plate reverb unit from 1957. It weighs several hundred pounds and not something you'd find in a home studio like mine, but I've used it a lot of times. I know it sounds pretty good actually. And Wave Alchemy has just released a plugin of the EMT 140 and they wanted me to review it. Okay, we're inside the door here. I'm using Cubase Pro 11. I'm running a PC with an i5 processor and eight gigs of RAM. And in this track, this setup, I'm uh, running five instances of Radiance and one instance of Glow. And I've got a lot of CPU power left to spare. And I'm gonna play you this track, it's not very long. Uh, where I use the Radiance plugin to emulate the EMT140, of course, and build up a nice ambience for the different sounds. There's not too much going on here. I have some drums, bass, synths, and piano, and a vocoder track in yellow here. And I'm going to break this down afterwards and show you how I've used Radiance on each of the individual tracks. And if you look over here, you can see the different instances of Radiance as the track is playing. Okay, so let's go from the top. Okay, so that was the track. I'm ending it with this uh, soft piano with um, one instance of Radiance. So let's break this down and see what the tracks are doing in terms of uh, reverb, the plate emulation of the EMT 140. And if you go track by track, you see I have some kicks, uh, snares, some toms, sweeps and shakers, etc. in the drums department. I have a couple of bass tracks with no reverb on them at all, so I'll just close this off. I have a couple of synths here. Uh, you heard the arpeggio from the Jupiter 8 and a PPG type uh, bell vox sound. And we have the piano tracks. And I thought I'd start with the piano track that opens the, the song. Let's hear it in isolation. And this was the, the track I started off with when I assembled this piece. I thought the mood for the entire song would be set using the right amount of uh, plate reverb from this emulation on this piano track. So let's open up uh, the first instance of Radiance and see what I've done. And uh, I've used the EMT 140, as I told you in the intro, uh, lots of times and I feel instantly at home here. There are a lot more things you can do with Radiance, the plugin, than with the original hardware, of course. And that's the way it is these days. You get a lot more options within plugins than in the, in the hardware usually. And that's only a good thing. It means that you can tailor your sound even more. 
uh, than what you could with the original hardware. The most important thing, does it sound like the original? Uh, that's sort of the point when using a emulation, you want to, to have some of the original mojo. Uh, when you use a plugin that set out to emulate the original mojo. So let's see, let's check out the piano track again uh, with this in the bypass mode. <laughs> I really like how the reverb, the plate reverb, wraps around the, the source and it gives me that, yeah, that feeling of going back in time, which is uh, why I really like to use uh, vintage hardware reverbs or emulation of vintage hardware reverbs. So I'm not using much of the of the input and output controls here. Uh, you have the input and output, of course, but you also have a sort of drive mode here that I found I liked more and more when I tested this plugin out. And uh, let's uh, play this piano part and add more drive. I think this drive um, option here is really cool and it works wonders on some sounds and some sounds you don't want to use it at all. But I felt a little bit of drive here, really gave a little bit of edge to that piano sound, which I really liked. And here we have the different plate models. I'm using the one named Clear here. I felt the clear model was the best choice for this piano sound. I can set the decay time. I have set a pretty long decay time, almost to the maximum. You can just pull this up and down really nice and also use the plus and minus buttons here. Over here we have some DSP parameters. You can set the pre-delay of course and by pressing this little note icon here you can tempo sync your uh, pre-delay. You have some low and high shelves and you have uh, three buttons here named smooth duck and flux. The flux knob here can also be changed to, um, to an ensemble mode. In ensemble mode this uh, button sort of gives you a uh, Roland Dimension D type of um, effect going. Let's hear it out on the piano. While in flux mode, you have a sort of a complex macro knob at hand where they've put in a lot of different stuff going on at the same time. Uh, modulation, etc., etc. Let's hear it a little bit there. So really fun to play with and you don't always know what the outcome will be, but uh, I really like this on this piano sound as well. Uh, not in ensemble mode for this uh, separate track, but in flux mode. Over here in the output section, you can set your output to be in mono if you want to, the reverb output. And you also have a button here, which is now unchecked, which means the plugin is in uh, EMT-140 hardware emulation mode. It emulates the EMT-140. But if you press this button and turn it on, the plugin will be something much more modern in, um, in sound. So uh, I guess most of us will want to have this unchecked, not on, to have the plugin as close to the EMT-140 as possible. And of course you have a wet dry knob, dry wet knob. And what I really like about this is that if you press this um, padlock uh, icon here, you have now uh, locked the dry wet knob. So if you now go up here and choose another preset, for instance, bright air, 
the dry wet knob is in the same position. It doesn't turn to another position, which I find is very handy actually for uh, testing out different presets with the same dry wet ratio. I wish a lot of other plugins had that same uh, feature. So uh, that's pretty much what you have uh, on the front panel here. Not too much, but enough to get some really nice sounds going. So that was the first piano track. The second one coming in a little bit later in the, in the song. Uses the same instance of uh, Radiance. As does this uh, last one coming uh, in at the very end. They all uses the same instance of Radiance, just with the more or less effect going on. So let's close this off and let's focus on the drums here. Uh, let's go back a little bit and uh, let's start the track. So that sweep you, you just heard, let's go back there. That's another instance of Radiance. I've used a preset called Crispy Hall and I've um, adjusted a few of the parameters here and no drive this time. This time I used a little bit of the ensemble and I have the mix dry wet knob at 50% and a lot of air on that one that goes with the preset. And we have the snare track. So it's pretty dry, but there are some reflections going on here. And I've used another preset uh, for that one called Bright Crisp. And I don't think I changed much at all in terms of adjustments of the different knobs here, pretty much the, the preset itself, which has a lot of air on it. And the lows are taken down a lot. No pre-delay. So let's check it out with or without. So let's check out the vocoder track here. Let's see what I've done here. I'm using the preset Ambience Air. Mono or not, I like it in stereo. But what we can do as well, uh, uh, in addition to play with uh, the adjustments, adjustments here, is to go into this button here, press that one, FX. And in here we have different ways of uh, adding coloration to the reverb sound. We can set it to clean, vintage or gritty. I think gritty is sets out to emulate the, the sound of the EMU SP1200. Let's check it out. Adds a kind of gritty sound. You also have a width setting here. You can set the crossover frequency between the low and high. Just as in the main menu, you can set it to mono. And you can play with the EQ setting here. So a nice option to have. You can really, really add some nice coloration here. So let's go out of that one and back to the, um, to the main uh, board. So that's the vocoder part and the last thing I used Radiance on here is that uh, is on the Jupiter 8 arpeggio here which you heard in the beginning. 
beginning. With some drive here and uh, I put this on modern. I felt that sounded better on the arpeggio. You can hear it in isolation. So I really felt that these instances of radiance uh, gave the track, the, the whole thing, a, a vintage vibe that I really liked. And the last track I have something going on on is this uh, gated toms track. And I felt that, well, for gated toms, why not use the Glow plugin, which sets out to emulate the classic AMS RMX16. This is also from Wave Alchemy, and I've reviewed this before. And this was the icing on the cake here to get this track going. This is a piece of music I've had lying around on my hard drive for a while. I wanted to move forward with it, but I was waiting for the right occasion. And the right occasion was when Veo Alchemy asked me to do a video review of Radiance. I tried the plugin and I instantly knew that this song uh, really could benefit from a EMT 140 plate reverb. So uh, that's why I've used this as the demo here today. If you'll like it, or if you'll find it has an edge over other EMT 140 plugins on the market, I don't know, but I'll leave a link for you in the video description to Wave Alchemist's website so you can check it out for yourself. As always, I'm Espencroft, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers!